and there we go we got no bootable device insert boot disk and press any key oh, we're gonna press f10 to go into bios now once you're into bios you want to try and detect your hard drive first we've got this enable this legacy support and i'm going to use linux min 64 bit this will confirm the test all right we have the linux logo which is good news on this one you can press the windows key if you want and type in disk but we can see no other disk or drive being detected which most probably mean that this hard drive on the laptop is dead <laughs> Hey name tags and welcome if you're just meeting now my name is Ash from Humanitech and on this channel I will help you develop a better relationship with technology so find the subscribe button click on it and click the bell icon to go from newbie to techie and use my Amazon affiliate links in the description below to help out the channel. This is a HP Pavilion 15 series the laptop does turn on but it does not boot into Windows so let's see what error message we get when we try to turn it on. All right, we're getting a smart hard disk error. The smart hard disk check has detected an imminent failure. To ensure no data loss, please back up the content immediately and run the hard disk test in systems diagnostics. So this HP laptop has got a built-in uh, error checking. We could go there if we wanted to, or we could continue the startup. Now I can tell you, I have gone in by pressing F2 and uh, there is a memory test and a hard drive test, which you can do if you want. And I have done so on this one. It's either inconclusive or it would not even run, giving me no test available on both the quick check and the extensive check. So I'm pretty convinced the hard drive on this is either failing or dead, but we can do further tests. Let's exit this. And I would rather go into BIOS at this stage. Now to go into BIOS on this laptop, you press F10. If you did press continue right now by pressing enter, it will try to boot up, but you will get an error message. And let me just show you first. So we press enter, it tries to boot up. You get a single blinking cursor up there, which is also significant. And there we go, we got no bootable device, insert boot disk and press any key. So it's not even detecting a boot drive right now. Now, let's reboot this by pressing Ctrl or Delete. Okay, we're going to restart this. And this time I'm going to go into BIOS by pressing F10 directly, if it will let me. Oh, we're going to press F10 to go into BIOS. Right. Oh, I don't know why it's asking me to save changes yet. I haven't done anything yet. Press ESC. Now, once you're into BIOS, you want to try and detect your hard drive. And at the moment, I can see that there is a factory installed OS, which is supposed to be Windows 10. But I cannot see any hard drive information on the first main tab. So we're going to go right to the boot option, if we have one. And it's here in uh, system configuration and all the way down. One of the first things you want to check it could be that your BIOS uh, hard drive order has been changed and you can see here first we've got this enable this legacy support sometimes this is disabled for whatever reason and you may want to go and enable this so if this was disabled make sure you enable this one and that will usually bring the bottom option as legacy boot order just in case your disk was a legacy and not a UEFI boot so next thing you want to check is in your UEFI, have you got the OS boot manager? It seems to be okay and there are no other drive detected. And then in your legacy boot, we have notebook hard drive checked as the first boot order. So in principle, we've got the setup, the setting of the boot order correct, but it's still not booting up, which probably means it's a dying or a dead hard drive. Now to save this, press F10, exit changes, yes. Um, before I'm going to do that, one of the best tools for troubleshooting, in my opinion, is a Linux live driver. And I'm going to use Linux min 64 bit. This is, I think, probably like 19 or 18. It doesn't really matter. Use whatever flavor of Linux you want. Uh, this one is a USB 3. And uh, this one is probably a GPT version. But if you have an older laptop, you may want to use an MBR. Check out the video up there for how to create one of these excellent tool 
So I'm going to plug that in one of the USB ports. It will not recognize right now, but I'm going to just exit this. And I'm going to reboot. And I'm going to go into BIOS again to change the boot order because I don't know about the boot order key on this one. Pressing F10 on the keyboard. There you go. We're going into BIOS. So F10 one more time to go into BIOS setup. Okay. So once I'm there, I'm going to go into the system configuration again. And then I'm going to go to the boot option. And this time I'm going to change the boot order on both the UEFI and legacy because I'm not sure which one I've got right now USB diskette on key USB hot disk I'm gonna press F6 make that my first boot drive also the legacy in case I need another one for legacy F6 and press F10 save yes now hopefully this will allow me to boot into a Linux live drive. The reason I like to do this, even if there was no onboard system diagnostics like for this HP laptop, by inserting a Linux drive, you can test for your computer. And if the hard drive is damaged and everything else is working, this will confirm the test. And here we have a couple of options here. Start the next mint, usually the first one is good enough. Press enter. If it doesn't boot, just get yourself a different uh, distribution from Linux or even a 32-bit if you have a different laptop which will not take a more modern UEFI 64-bit version. All right, we have the Linux logo, which is good news. A few more seconds will be in. And voila, at this stage, once I can see a desktop Linux, I am quite happy because that means everything else on the computer is or should be working except for the hard drive. And we can go and do some further tests right now. The first thing I want to do is to open Disk Utility on this one. You can press the Windows key if you want and type in Disk. And it's the second one. Press on Disks. On your screen now you can see there are two drives, a 16 gigabyte and a 15 gigabyte thumb drive. One of them is the Linux Live installation drive and the other one is an extra pen drive I've inserted to be able to record and save this on-screen tutorial with a Linux app called Simple Screen Recorder. The third one is for the DVD or CD-ROM drive, the 1.9 gigabyte loop device, but we can see no other disk or drive being detected, which most probably mean that this hard drive on the laptop is dead. And since you're here, you might as well go ahead and test things like your internet, your volume, and anything else you really want, because this just means you're going to eliminate every possibility except for the hard drive, which we have confirmed now to be dead. For the next part, we just need to replace this hard drive and the advice is to get yourself an SSD instead of a mechanical spin drive for increased performance and speed. I already uploaded a separate tutorial on how to replace a hard drive with an SSD, check out the link above, but essentially all you need to do is to disconnect the laptop, remove the battery, press and hold the power button for about 30 seconds to discharge static electricity, get yourself a small screwdriver, remove all the obvious and non-obvious screws from the back cover remove the damaged hard drive replace with an SSD and make sure the new SSD is working before you screw everything back together since this laptop already had Windows 10 digitally signed you can create a Windows 10 installation drive from Microsoft's website and go through the motion of reinstalling Windows 10 check out the above link for a tutorial it's pretty simple stick your Windows 10 installation drive in one of the USB ports connect your laptop with a charger and we can now turn it on and hopefully we're gonna have some good news okay we have movement we have hp we may need to go back into f10 bios because we changed the boot order sometimes it may detect a windows 10 installation drive on there which it has it looks like it so we just go through the motion of installing windows check out the video above for a tutorial on this if you are using Windows 10 Home, I would recommend to disconnect from the internet during installation so you don't have to enter a Microsoft account as your login username. You will be able to enter a local account and you can always reconnect to the internet afterwards. This feature has been removed from Windows 10 Home, but in Windows 10 Professional, you can still create an offline local account username. 
Hopefully this was an easy and straightforward troubleshoot and fix tutorial and if you found it helpful consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell icon to go from newbie to techie and if you want to further improve your relationship with tech check out these other videos on the end screen. This was Ash from Hillmine Tech and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.